Hello and welcome to 12 Volt Planet TV. In this video we're going to be looking at one of our most popular products, the Victron 30 amp DC to DC charger. We'll cover how to fit one of these, which cables and fuses to use, and the difference between the isolated and non-isolated models of the charger. Before you go out and purchase a charger, you want to make sure you're getting the right one. The difference between the isolated and non-isolated models is that Victron's isolated chargers have separate isolated negative connections for the starter and auxiliary batteries. You would require this isolated version where your starter and auxiliary batteries do not have an electrically common negative connection or where, for your particular application, it is preferable to keep them separated. This unit will still function perfectly well in a setup where the batteries have a common negative connection, but you would not be making use of the isolation feature. Victron's non-isolated chargers have separate positive connections for the starter and leisure battery. However, they differ from the isolated versions in that they only have one negative connection that is used to connect to a common ground point, such as the chassis of a vehicle. So you'll need to check which one would be suitable for you. Then you want to make sure to get the right power output. Victron make 18 amp and 30 amp models of the DC to DC chargers. For this video, we're fitting a 30 amp charger, which would be suitable for a 100 amp hour or higher capacity lithium battery or a 200 amp hour or higher AGM battery. If your battery bank is smaller than this, I would recommend using the 18 amp version, but it is always worth checking in the manual for your battery what the maximum charge current it can handle is. Now you know which charger you'll need, the cable sizing is a very important part of the installation process as with 12 volt electrics a fairly large voltage drop can happen if the wrong cable is used. Victron recommends using 16mm square cable for lengths up to 10 meters, and you will have to use the same cable on the positive and negative side. With fusing, you want to fuse below the cable's overall rating and above the current you're expecting to go through it. In this case, we're using 16mm squared cable, which is rated to 110 amps with a 30 amp charger, so a 40 amp fuse will be fine. We've used a midi link fuse for this, and the holders for these have M5 bolts on them, so you'll just need to use a ring terminal with a 5mm stud hole. You'll just want to fuse as close to the start of the cable run as possible, like this. For our electrical board, we fitted a non-isolated DC to DC charger. To set this up, firstly, disconnect the remote on and off feature by removing this green wire bridge. Then connect the positive cable from your starter battery to the in input on the charger. For the purposes of this video, I won't disconnect the, the cables, but all you'd need to do is strip the insulation off the end of the cable, leaving the bare copper, and insert the bare copper in, into the screw terminal and then screw down on it and make sure it's nice and tight. And then we open the Victron Connect app. This app is free on Apple and Android devices. Once you open the app, your device will appear here, but we're using a demo device. So I'll show you on here. We'll just select our charger. Um, and then this is the first screen that you'll see once you open the app. Um, so you just wanna go to the top right, the settings cog wheel, and then select battery settings. And then this screen will appear and you can select a preset. We're using AGM battery, so I'll select AGM spiral cell, and then you've got the absorption and float voltages there. Those are standard, but you can check in your battery's manual or on the website that you purchase it from, just to make sure that those match your requirements. If they don't, these can be changed. Um, if you just select on, on there, you can just change the voltages up and down. But then if those all look all right, you can click save, save the settings, and then you're good to go. And then you repeat it for the leisure battery side. So simply strip your cable, pop it in the output. We're going into a fuse, then onto a buzz bar, which has the solar charger and the mains charger and inverter and everything connected onto it. But it's eventually then linked onto the leisure battery. And then you bring your negative cable to the common ground point. In this case, we've used a buzz bar, which is grounded to the two batteries. Um, but you'd need to check where your batteries are grounded to and ground to this point. Then you reinsert the green jumper and the product is then active. Once you start the engine of your vehicle, the charger will wait two minutes before it starts outputting power just so your starter battery can receive a charge first. Two other things that are worth noting are to remember to mount the DC to DC charger vertically with a clearing of 10 centimeters above and below the unit for optimal cooling and remember to fit the charger as close to the leisure battery as possible. I hope this helps you decide which charger is suitable for you and the technicalities of how to fit one. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to see more. All of the products that we've used in the video are linked below and our contact details are also in the description so you can get in touch with any questions that you may have. Thank you for watching.